Okay, Tony, thanks for joining us. It's been a, a, a difficult week uh, <laughs> in many ways, hasn't it? To just, just talk us through how we reached the point where the, the Coventry fixture had to be postponed. It, it has been a difficult week. Um, we've been living with the virus now for well, what, what seems a lifetime, but uh, best part of two years. And, and, and as a club, and I think as an industry, we've handled that well so far. Um, unfortunately, this week it, it did catch up with us and uh, we had a number of cases uh, at the training ground this week, a number of players tested uh, positive for COVID and uh, that, that's meant that we've had to take action with regard to the Coventry game. And these things, uh, are obviously, we don't want to call games off. Uh, we had three and a half thousand fans going for the Coventry game uh, tomorrow, which would have been our biggest away following for some considerable time. Uh, and it was a game that we were looking forward to, three and a half thousand of our fans were looking forward to. Um, would have been a great game of football, but uh, unfortunately, given that number of uh, positive cases at the training ground, added to the injuries that we'd already got, we just couldn't field a team tomorrow. The safety of players and staff has, has got to be paramount in situations like this, hasn't it? The, the safety of everybody, um, but no, you're, you're absolutely right. The Football League helpfully issued guidance on the number of players that uh, you needed in order to complete a fixture and um, you know, at the time of speaking to you we've got uh, nine players who've, been, who've tested positive for Covid. On top of that we've got six players injured, five of which are uh, of a longer term nature. You know, we've, been, we've been living with that if you like for, um, for quite a bit of the season long term injuries and um, we could only field a team with with eight outfield players tomorrow. Um, one, of, one of the players is sick, so he could come back next week. One of the players has got a shorter term injury, so he could be available next week as well, but uh, we just weren't, be, weren't in a position where we could field a team. So where does the Barnsley game, which is scheduled for Boxing Day, where does, where does that stand at the moment? Well, yeah, I, I guess there's a, there's a balance here that we absolutely want to play the games where we can, but the safety of the players has to be paramount, along with the safety of spectators uh, in the ground. But with regard to the game going ahead in, in this snow, it's about the safety of the players. But uh, also we want to let sports know as soon as possible if the game is going to be cancelled, because it's, it's an important time of year for everybody and people want to make their plans. We've got 3,000 fans uh, with tickets for Barnsley, so we are keen to let those supporters know as soon as possible. We're in discussions with the Football League but um, given the fact that of those injuries I mentioned to you, five of them are of a long-term nature and we have had nine players test positive, nine of the first team squad this is, test positive for COVID. So we're in discussions with the league with regard to the isolation period for those players and when they'd be able to return to training, when they'd be able to return to play as well. So my, my hope is that we're able to provide an answer for supporters uh, in the very near future on that. But Clearly, we need to follow all of the steps and have the, the appropriate discussions with, with our medical staff um, and also with the league and with the, the other club involved as well. The government's Plan B protocols are now in force, so it means that supporters over the age of 18 need to provide um, proof of vaccination or uh, proof of a, of a negative lateral flow test to be able to access games. Uh, the next game here at the Bet365 Stadium is against Derby. So what sort of protocols will be in place? What can fans expect to see when they arrive at the stadium? So, yeah, safety of players is, is important. Safety of supporters is equally important. So um, when we are able to put, put the game on, and uh, as I sit here now, absolutely, I would, I would expect that the Derby game goes ahead. And that, that will be our first game where the new protocols are in place. So we will require all supporters over the age of 18 to, um, to be able to provide evidence of a COVID pass or evidence that they have taken a lateral flow or a PCR test in the, the last 48 hours. So um, that, that evidence can be digitally on their phone, probably the, um, the easiest form, or a paper copy. And we will be providing supporters with the facility. If, if, they're, if they're finding it difficult to download these, to download the past, to come down to the ground the day before and we'll help them with that. I suppose it's inevitable there will be some disruption so the message really should be to fans to be prepared. 
have your pass downloaded yeah. on your phone and have your paper copy ready and, and be prepared? Yeah, if, if everybody is prepared in advance and they've downloaded or printed out their pass, uh, then it should be, as ever with these things, it should be a very easy process. Arriving at the turnstiles, showing their season card in one hand and their pass in, in the other hand and, uh, and, and everything will be straightforward. Bring a face mask with you. Uh, again, following government guidance, we will require support over the age of 18, those who aren't medically exempt, to wear their face mask when they're not in their seats as well. So th this, is, um, this will be the first home game with the new protocols. So I'd ask supporters to be patient. I'd ask them to arrive in good time and also ask them to prepare in advance and, and think through you know, what they need in order to gain access to the ground to keep themselves and to keep their fellow supporters safe.